satellite technology allows us to identify this, which otherwise would be going totally unnoticed and undetected. One of the biggest things that I would love to see in future uh, satellite technology is the ability to actually see lightning uh, within the cloud tops. All the vertical motion and so forth greatly enhances its ability to create lightning. This lightning mapping will actually show frequency. If the storm is becoming severe, the lightning frequency increases and thus be able to do an early detection of whether or not that storm is severe or not. If we knew more about tornado genesis and structure and we're able to stretch that warning out to 20 or 25 minutes, right now the average time is about 15 minutes or so. That gives people more time to prepare and seek shelter. Without the GOES satellite, we would be back in the dark ages of the mid to early 60s. These GOES satellites are responsible, in my opinion, for saving many, many thousands of lives. At any given moment, about 1,800 thunderstorms are in progress somewhere on the globe. New observations by NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope show that thunderstorms make antimatter. The process starts with a terrestrial gamma ray flash, or TGF, an intense pulse of gamma rays originating from thunderstorms. These dots mark TGFs observed by Fermi's gamma ray burst monitor during the spacecraft's first eight months of operations. Researchers estimate that there may be as many as 500 TGFs each day. On December 14, 2009, as Fermi passed over Egypt, it spotted a TGF produced by a thunderstorm in Zambia. The TGF was over the spacecraft's horizon where Fermi couldn't see it. So how could Fermi have detected it? Scientists believe that the TGF process begins in a thunderstorm's intense electrical field. Electrons within this field become accelerated upward. Above the storm, where the air is thin, the electrons can ramp up to speeds nearly as fast as the speed of light. When these ultra-fast electrons encounter an atom, they emit gamma rays. Very rarely, one of these gamma ray photons grazes an atom and transforms into a pair of particles. One, an electron, is normal matter. The other is antimatter, the electron's opposite, called a positron. The gamma rays travel in straight lines, but the charged particles spiral along lines of Earth's magnetic field. And that was the route to Fermi. The particles created by the TGF rode upward on magnetic field lines and then struck the spacecraft. The positrons annihilated when they struck electrons in Fermi, creating a flash of gamma rays. For an instant, Fermi became a gamma ray source and set off its own detectors. A fraction of a second later, some of the particles were bounced back along the same magnetic field line. They again passed through Fermi and again produced gamma rays. The spacecraft has observed this phenomenon on at least four other occasions. So the next time lightning flashes and thunder roars, remember, you may be witnessing antimatter in the making. So we're looking at the role of thunderstorms 
and electrified clouds in the global electric circuit. So a cloud doesn't have to actually be producing lightning to be electrified. And there's what we call a Wilson current that generally runs from the top of the cloud into the ionosphere and helps feed the global electric circuit. So in, a, in the typical thunderstorm setup, it's a source of charge. In the reverse setup, or the um, opposite polarity, it's generally a sink. So we're hoping to find some parameters of thunderstorms, like we're looking at the speed of the updraft and how much ice is in there. And we're hoping we can relate that to how strong or weak the current is.